<sighs> All right, what's going on guys? Fubbles back again, and I wanted to talk about the new hero buffs that we're getting for Remnant Violet, as well as top model Luluka, and then we also have something for Pirate Captain Flan. Where, where, where are you? Where's my little Flan? There you go. Oh, she's so thick. Okay, <laughs> let's just get right into it. Now, we did get the, the information today. We're also getting a buff for Vildred as a Hawk and Luluka, which I think is a Hawk's buff is probably one of my favorites, because I actually really liked him. I just didn't... Um, I just didn't want to build him because I didn't think he was that good. Like, I didn't think he was good enough. So, uh, going into Remnant Violet, his S3 Soul Burn is now being changed to his S1. So, his S1 is going to be able to grant an extra turn, which is going to be good for Cycling Massacre. You'll see here the cooldown actually gets reduced to 5 turns for Massacre as well, which is going to be really nice for Remnant Violet. Increased Attack of the Caster for 3 turns before attacking with a sword. So, I... Before attacking with a sword... This comma is confusing me. Does it... I don't have Remnant Violet, so I'm not sure if he gets the attack buff before he attacks or after he attacks. Uh, penetrates defense by 50%. Either way, Massacre is a really, really strong skill. Usually, it can screw people over if you can actually get the um, their turn Massacre going on. But you'll see here that Concentration is actually being buffed. Uh, at the end of the caster's turn, has a 100% chance to increase evasion of the caster for one turn, so 50% evasion. <clears throat> after successfully evading, you gain a focus, right? When focus is at 5, after being attacked, or now, it is being changed to after attacking or being attacked, he consumes it all and uses Massacre against a random enemy. This can really screw things up for your opponent just because of the randomness factor. So it's like, okay, cool, this guy's probably going to want to go after this. Let me buff this guy so that way he doesn't die. And then it's like, okay, cool, I buffed this guy, but now this person's getting killed instead. Him being able to actually use his uh, five focus after attacking is going to be so nice because he would just straight up be ignored unless like they have like a Bellion or... Who else has an S1? Or like a Dizzy. Who the hell uses Dizzy? Right? So if they had like a Bellion, this was a really good character to like counterplay at if uh, she didn't hit and then strip his buff. So him being able to actually consume it after attacking is going to be really, really nice for him. So he's going to be a lot more of a threat, I think. Increase attack of the caster for three turns uh, before attacking with the sword penetrates defense by 50%. Now I'm not sure if the buff is going to be before or after, but either way, three turn attack buff is incredibly dangerous for a skill that cycles in five turns and then you can also soul burn for an extra turn that's gonna be really cool I, I actually am really happy for the remnant violet buff i think what i'm most excited for is probably gonna be the pirate captain flan i want her to i i, I don't know how op she's gonna be but she seems like she's gonna be actually really good now from what she was before top model Luluka. her victory pose is gonna be her s2 She's going to increase combat readiness of all allies by 20% instead of 15 now. So that's going to be a 5% increase to CR push for your entire party, which is awesome. And increases the tag of the caster for two turns and grants the uh, caster an extra turn. Now, that is pretty standard. Same old, same old. Now, increased combat readiness by 20% instead of 15%. Might not sound like a really big difference, but considering that it's technically, if you think about it, it's like a, it's like a 20% increase to your entire party. Uh, excuse me. It's like a, um, what is it called? Like a 15% increase across the board to the rest of your party. My bad. I'm, I'm mis miswording. Uh, Demolish is also getting buffed. Instead of only causing extinction and decreasing the caster skill cooldown by one turn if she actually gets a kill, um, she deals damage proportional to speed as before, but now she's actually going to increase attack of your entire team for two turns that is going to be really nice because that means that she can actually be set up as an opener like ran now i don't know what her actual base speed is can we actually okay can i see this uh where, where, where do i want to look it up e7 top model people tell me not to use this site but i kind of like using it for like base stats at least right so stats how much speed we got here speed 111 Ay! It's kind of on the slow side maybe maybe not necessarily an opener then hmm i mean it's not bad speed uh either way um her imprint concentration is also being changed to critical hit chance instead of attack percent since this character is based on like the caster's speed like her s3 i i personally prefer this imprint concentration to be crit chance just because if you want the attack you can actually like flow that crit chance into attack anyways and if you have the imprints, I feel like a crit chance imprint is much better than an uh, attack percent increase, unless you're a character like, um, like Straws. Um, I think that, like, those characters that penetrate defense based on your attack, I feel like those characters scale a lot better. So, Commander Pavel, um, Straws, Hua Yum, <laughs> RIP Hua Yum. 
Uh, okay, goodbye. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, and then last but not least, Pirate Captain Flan. Um, we do have Execution buff, which is our S1. Her S1, instead of only detonating bar burns and bombs, is now going to actually uh, have a 75% chance to steal one buff. Her passive is also going to be giving her effectiveness by 50%, so you don't actually have to have, like, like I think one ring is enough to cover all the effectiveness you'll ever need, which which is really, really, really good. And since this character can no longer trigger critical hits, now you can actually use this as a counter to uh, characters like uh, Martial Artist Ken because you'll be able to steal the buff, not trigger the crit, and on top of that, you'll also be able to um, detonate and plant bombs safely on characters that counter crits or... Yeah, it pretty much just kind of crap. I mean, maybe just another kind of <laughs> I can't think of another one. I know that there are definitely some more. Oh! Oh, never mind. I was gonna say, I was gonna say, oh, and Senya, but Senya wants you to not crit. And she gives never mind. Okay, you, you don't you don't want that. You don't want that. But um either way, attacks the enemy with a gun with a 75% chance to steal a buff. At the end of the turn, detonates burn and bomb any uh, effects inflicted on the target. And since she's not dependent on needing someone to buff her anymore, since she can steal a buff. <coughs> Excuse me. Her passive also has a chance to, to, to trigger. After using Execution or S1, when the caster has a buff, activates Hunt. Hunt raises the morale of all allies and increases combat readiness of all allies by 15%. I'm not sure if this um, works on her. I, I Honestly, I've used her like three times. I didn't like what she did, and then I kind of just like boxed her away. And not the good kind of box, but I'm talking about like the shove her away into a little corner of the, of the, of the waiting room. Um, her S2 redirects 30% of damage suffered by the caster to the foremost ally, so that's going to be really good for uh, Krow, Ross, uh, and pretty much any character like that. Uh, let's see here. Um, oh, and Hunt can be activated every two turns, which is pretty nice. And then her S3 actually is getting changed as well. Her S3 increases the attack of the caster for three turns instead of two, which is really good, and attacks all enemies with a barrage of cannon fire, inflicting burn and planting a bomb for two turns before decreasing combat readiness by 30%, and increases her own combat readiness by 50%. Herbie, I, I really love the increased combat readiness of caster by 50% skills, like that on like Edward, Edward, uh, DN. I really love that CR push that you get from that. Attacks all enemies, inflicting burn and planting a bomb for two turns. Like being able to plant bombs on enemies sounds really, really good now with that 50% effectiveness buff. And the fact that you don't have to worry about building the character with crit or crit damage because you don't have like you you don't have that available anymore. <laughs> like like this character was so like super super hungry. Let me see what they actually said, because I didn't even read this. I'm just like um, Pirate Captain Flan, who can suppress the enemy by utilizing her skills burn and bomb effects. However, her skill set was difficult to use in a chain and had too many variables, making her a difficult hero to use. To strengthen her weakness, her effectiveness will be increased greatly, but her attacks will no longer trigger a critical hit. That's, I think that's fine. After these adjustments, she'll be able to contain enemies more effectively, as it will be easier for her to inflict debuffs such as burns and bombs on enemies with high effect. Inflicting burn and planting a bomb. Oh, damn, that's not bad. <laughs> Uh, there you go. Yeah, this is this is what's cool to me as it'll be easier for her to inflict debuffs on enemies with high effect resistance Moreover the duration of the buff granted by her skill her full Oh by her skill her full burst her wh why, why'd you put a Capital okay, that's weird her full burst will be increased to increase her overall damage dealt also the amount of combat readiness that is reduced by the skill her that's such a weird wording i'm not gonna lie i'm so confused I, I i hate i hate reading their stuff sometimes um the amount of combat readiness that is reduced by the skill will be increased so that she will be able to gain her turn more easily after using her skill lastly execution will now have a chance to steal the buff which will help her suppress the enemy with burn and detonating bombs oh, it's, it's so good it is it is it is just so it is so good i just realized i didn't have my camera on oops Rapidly attack. Okay, so Vildred is actually just getting a straight up damage increase. You'll see here pretty much everything sweep, dancing blade, as well as blade ascent, just damage dealt, damage dealt, damage dealt increase. Uh, hero who deals additional damage to enemies after defeating. Moreover, the damage dealt was not enough to easily defeat enemies. With these adjustments, damage dealt by all of Vildred's skills will be increased to fulfill his role more effectively, which is really nice. And nowadays, he's just like a speed imp a speed imprint increase, and then if he's good, cool, maybe you'll kill something. <laughs> is a hack. Um, got his elaborate plan change, but I think that's probably the most exciting change for me personally. Uh, you'll see here elaborate plan. 
Uh, dispels two debuffs from an ally and the caster before granting a barrier for two turns. Increase the combat readiness by 50%. I already said that I kind of like that, but the issue with Zahak is sometimes he'll do the combat readiness push of 50% and then never get another turn, even if he got his barrier, no matter how strong that barrier is. So his elaborate plan is now being changed. He dispels two debuffs from an ally and the caster before increasing combat readiness of the ally by 50%. So you choose the ally, um, you dispel two debuffs, gives them some CR push, and you get an extra turn with Zahak, which is really good because his S3 actually is a really, really good counter to characters like Cho, characters like um, maybe Alencia. Uh, I, I, he causes injury, right? So characters like A-Ravi, Alencia, Cho, like Zahak might actually be a legit option nowadays, which is I think is really, 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 really cool. Now, is this 15% the max? Because like you have the skill enhancement here. I'm assuming that, that this is after the fact. Uh, e either way, the Mola change is going to be changed so that he increases combat readiness, which is interesting. To be honest, ha to be honest, half the time, like when, when it's like one or two CR push, I usually just leave it at plus three and save myself some Mola Goras, bro. I'm not trying to wail as I, if I don't need to. The hack will be adjusted to help him utilize this skill. In addition, combat readiness increase affected uh, granted to the cast will be changed to grant an extra turn so that he can use his skill elaborate plan and execute in a chain that's so good I, I, i've been wanting i like that's what i wanted when i first played with them i'm like what, the, what is this bro uh luluka uh pretty much um her wave of vengeance her s3 i believe yeah her, her s3 attacks all enemies with the power of ruin her defense break is going to be changed from 85 percent to 100 percent chance which is good before increasing the caster's attack increased attack can stack up to three times oh Oh, that sounds kind of cool. <laughs> I, did, I, I, did, I didn't know she did that. I'm not going to lie. I didn't know that. Uh, Bad Cat Armin. I haven't... Okay, I've, I'm not going to lie. I have not looked at any of the four stars, so I apologize. Uh, let's just get right into it. Bad Cat Armin attacks the enemy with a giant shield uh, with a 45% chance to provoke for one turn. I'm assuming this is the S1. Damage dealt increases proportional to the caster's max health. When used on the caster's turn, are you ready? Char changes into an attack that targets all enemies. The changed attack does not trigger a dual attack. Okay, so that is the S1. So, so when, when it's her turn, she's going to just AoE high chance to provoke? That's pretty nice. <laughs> That's pretty nice. I like that. Okay. That's cheeky. Uh, catch him. I'm assuming this is going to be the pat. Yeah, I'm assuming it's in order. So this is going to be the passive. After being attacked, has a 50% chance to increase critical hit damage of the foremost ally for one turn before making the foremost ally counterattack. Interesting. When attacked by an enemy inflicted with provoke or redirected provoke, the effect chance is doubled to a 100% chance. Oh, yo, Batcat Armin is actually going to be pretty nice. Oh, that's dope. Huh. I like this. This is cool. I, I, I really like... um. Characters that can be a bit cheeky. Th is this it, Nya? Uh, attack the enemy with a huge explosion. Now we'll really not, and this prov guarantees provoke. Okay, Pog, that's freaking dope. Provoking for one turn grants barrier to all allies for two turns. Damage dealt barrier, damage dealt and barrier strength increases proportional to the caster's max health. Damage dealt. Is this damage dealt based on proportional health too? Good, 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 good. Okay. Oh, what the? Oh, this used to increase speed. Huge explosion provoking for one turn increases defense to the caster for two turns and grants a barrier to all allies. Okay, wow, that's so cheeky. And the cooldown is also reduced by a turn? This is reduced by a turn too? Oh, wait, wait, hold on. No, that was already there. Okay, okay. Then no, I didn't realize this is the same skill. For some reason, I thought the S2 got had a cooldown on it. Okay. Originally designed to be a hero who could synergize well with other heroes using her ability... Uh, to make her ally counterattack, but difficult to use her passive, low counterattack chance. With these adjustments, her skill catch will have an increased chance to make her ally counter. Her skill, are you ready, will be changed to provoke all enemies instead of inflicting injuries. In addition, her skill is this it, will have chances to provoke enemies, and its soul burn will cha be changing it to provoke for two turns instead of one turn. To increase survivability, will be given defense. That is dope. I like this. Yo, oh man, I have back out armor. I just never had a reason to build her. Um, I haven't even built regular armor or crimson armor to be honest. Uh, I like. I, 
I'm, I'm very much a little horror. I like my five stars, and they they're the ones that get my molas first. So four stars end up getting put on a back burner, which is which is not good. Admittedly, admittedly so. Uh, Jenna, I don't know what Jenna even does, to be honest. Nor do I really care. Um, she's getting everything buffed. Okay. Attacks with the staff, 35% chance to stun for one turn. Not bad. Cast weakening magic with a 100% chance to... Uh, let me do the awaken. Cast weakening magic with a 100% chance to decrease buff durations of all enemies by one turn before granting immunity to all allies for two turns. Oh, that's cute. That's cheeky. Soul burn grants an extra turn. Skill enhancement, one turn cooldown. Okay. Uh, cold snap attacks all enemies with frost magic. 75% chance to decrease defense for two turns before a 100% chance to decrease combat readiness by 20%. Interesting. Oh, uh, she looks like she's actually gonna be some like pretty good utility. I don't, I don't see myself really using this character, to be honest. But giving immunity to all allies, decrease their buff durations for a turn. And you could soul burn for an extra turn and then decrease their defense after you strip them. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. I don't know how how. How badly I'd want a builder still. All right, so Alabastron is uh, one of those artifacts that was pretty dog water. I like. I don't even remember this artifact. What what is this thing called? Alabastron. I, I should have it. I don't even have it. That's tough. Five star artifact increases the caster's effectiveness by thirty five percent. Has a twenty five to fifty percent chance to increase speed. Oh, is that the one that's in the shop right now? Oh, that is the one in the shop. Oh, it's hers. Okay. Yeah, it's, I was literally looking at this today. That's funny. Has a 25 to 50% chance to increase speed. That is going to be changed. It increases, uh, effect, increases effectiveness by 35%. Increases the caster's effectiveness by 35%. Why the wording change there? That's so weird. Uh, I mean, I guess it's, it, I, I think they're just trying to simplify it. After attacking with a single attack, has a 35 to 70% chance to inflict a random debuff on the target for two turns. Can only be activated once per turn. Decrease attack, decrease defense, decrease speed, or unhealable. If you can, like, randomly just, like, if, if you attack and then you just randomly deal decreased defense, that could be really good. But the RNG factor of it is, is too inconsistent for me. I think I would take, I would definitely take this over what it was, that's for sure, and the increased effectiveness by 35% is really good for characters that you just want to be dealing debuffs after, like, like over and over and over again. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Chatty. I, I don't even know what Chatty is. Uh, is that the Halloween thing? It is the Halloween thing. Okay, so that's getting buffed too. I love Cyrilla's breast. Um, Chatty, uh, let's see here. 50%, 50 to 100% chance to be granted a barrier. 50 to 100, what the hell? Oh, when you level it up, duh. Uh, granted a barrier for two turns when the caster's health is 50% or less. That was dog water. At the start of battle, grants a barrier for two turns. After being attacked, has a 50 to 100% chance to be granted barrier for two turns when the caster's health is under 50%. Barrier strength proportional to the caster's attack. The effect after being attacked can only be activated once every two turns. Interesting. Barrier strength increased as well. Okay, cool. Uh, so I, I guess they're trying to just make it so that it's more playable. Hmm. All right. Either way, I am actually happy with these buffs overall. Like, I'm super excited for... Well, maybe not Remnant Violet because I don't have him and he's going to clap my ass. But I am excited for Top Model Luluka and I am excited for Pirate Captain Flan. Um, next, uh, next free unequip, what I think I'm going to do is probably build up my Top Model Luluka to be much faster and my Pirate Captain Flan to, to be ready too. Do I have imprints on Top Model Luluka? Because that crit chance is going to be kind of nice, not going to lie. Let me see. Top Model Luluka. <laughs> no. I never had a reason to. What is Luluka's input? <laughs> yeah, I, I still haven't worked on my Luluka, but her getting buffed too is really good. Because the reason I never built her was literally only because I didn't care too much for an 85% chance of decreasing defense. 
let me know what you guys think of this of, of these buffs I'm overall pretty pretty excited pretty happy about it don't particularly care for Alabastron too much don't care for chatty don't care for Jenna um I do have Vildred built, but I never use him. I never molded him because I, I never felt like he was worth it. Uh, but like, damn, these buffs are these buffs are nice.